the real war against women. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, the LSU-Iowa NCAA semifinals on Monday night was the highest rated in NCAA women's basketball history. Iowa star forward Caitlin Clark, the best woman to ever play college basketball, is attracting an entirely new fan base. Other stars like Angel Reese have huge followings as well and enormous talent. And the rivalries, man, they're exciting to watch. That's what makes women's basketball so fun is, you know, you have great competition and that's what we've had all year long. But I think Angel would say the same is like, it's not just us in women's basketball. That's not the only competitive thing about where our game is at. And that's what makes it so good. We need multiple people to be really good. And um, yeah, I think both of our careers, whether she decides to stay or what to go, um, you know, we'll have great careers in the WNBA and that's been both of our dreams all along. So I think we're both excited for that as well. Yeah, she kind of pushed past all the controversies, and she was poised and powerful and so inspiring to young players and, and people who aren't involved in sports. Now, as a former college athlete myself, I do know how much time and how much hard work these women have devoted to becoming the best of the best, just like the male athletes. They earn every award they get, and no one should ever diminish their achievements. But that is exactly what the Biden administration will do in its proposing of rule changes to Title IX that will make it easier for biological men to compete against girls and women in sports across the United States. Now, it doesn't matter that they're now claiming to have delayed it. So how would it actually do this? Because by redefining the law's prohibition against sex discrimination to include gender identity, they would upend women's sports. And I think they already were beginning to feel the blowback. According to one analysis, this would be catastrophic for female athletes. President Joe Biden would have the federal government compel schools, colleges, and universities to allow biological males who identify as females to compete against female athletes. Now, of course, Biden and Harris, they try to sell themselves uh, as the big defenders of girl power the true protectors of women. But that's always been a lie, and Trump was right. You talk about women's rights, this is the opposite of women's rights. This is a horrible thing, and they're not allowed to even talk about it. But I'll talk about it. If I were a basketball coach of a women's team, I would never, ever lose. I'd be the greatest coach of all time. I don't like them, but I'd say, LeBron, uh, did you ever think of becoming a woman? Did you ever? Because I'd like to have you on my team. Now, forget the rank unfairness, given the physical advantage that biological men have over women. We've been through that ad nauseum. Trans infiltration of women's sports put women in actual danger. Now, I played field hockey, and let me just say, I'm really glad I didn't have to face players from our boys and men's ice hockey teams. Forget about it. And when boys spike a volleyball over a net, injuries can be very serious to girls. About a year ago, I was severely injured in a high school volleyball game by a biological male on the opposing team. I suffer from long-lasting effects, including impaired vision, partial paralysis on my right side, memory loss. A sigh of relief from female athletes around the globe when a year ago, the World Athletics Council banned biological men from participating in women's events. But their idea of protecting women begins and ends with abortion in the Biden administration, as if it's the goal of most women, just forget all the other goals, their real goal is to ensure abortion through the third trimester in all 50 states. That's where it begins and ends. How sick. Now, let's face it. The Democrats' favorite kind of woman now is a man pretending to be one. We in the Biden-Harris administration want you to know that we see you, we support you, and we celebrate you. We also know it's not an easy time to be you. Walking into a classroom should be an act of hope, not an act of bravery. But every day you choose to show up as your true self, you make this world a more brave, more honest, and more free place. Notice when they're celebrating trans visibility, they use the words honest, brave, and free. It's an Orwellian subversion of the English language. It's literally the opposite. Biological men who compete against women in sports are dishonest and cowardly. Oh, and you can add selfish to that mix, because the trans athletes who can't make it in competing against men, 
somehow they just love dominating women. Now, the people who claim to care so much about ending misogyny are the worst misogynists out there. Who cares if the big ratings that women's sports are now getting would actually decline and probably eventually just crater if biological men participated? The women's college uh, softball World Series, the women's tennis at the U.S. Open, who wants to see men play in the women's tennis? If some female athletes, well, just end up losing the chance to participate or lose scholarships or money to go pro, I guess it's just say la vie. They're collateral damage on the way to perfect equity in sports. What a bunch of cynical, sad people. But this bastardization of Title IX is just one more policy demanded by the left, caused by the left, then pushed by the White House that hurts women and girls. After all, high crime hurts women. It's about morals and people being able to walk up and down the street in their own community and not be a victim to the crime. This is the worst I've ever seen it. And I've been through, I was here through the drug epidemic. I was here. It wasn't as bad as it is now. D.C. is under siege and uh, we need help. We, re we, re we really do. The high cost of living hurts women. Just for like a week's worth or just a grocery is $200 easily and it's like not even, that's not even two weeks of groceries. Really being careful about where we spend our money. It's um, coming down to the necessities. And of course the open border, that hurts women. People go on walks and stuff who always like go with each other. As a woman, it's just like I have to be extra, extra careful um, and be extra protective and it's just super scary. And bad schools, they hurt women. Reducing school choices won't make struggling schools better. It will just remove some of the best school options in the city and the state from parents, which will ultimately limit opportunities for students. Please keep selective enrollment schools part of the mix. And their pro-weed, pro-porn agenda, that hurts women. He started using marijuana when he was 14 years old and became psychotic, and sadly, he died five years after he first started using marijuana. For decades, the left has claimed to support women. It's a lie, and it always has been a lie. The left supports its own radical efforts to tear down traditional American life, and if women happen to get in their way, well, that's just too bad for women. American women deserve better, and our populist movement has to do everything possible to make that clear, especially before November. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.